It's kind of wild how a lot of the takes that I had back in 2018 are really starting to come out and deface themselves, I guess, is the best way to put it. Either that or the haters have really gotten to me and they've made a deal with the hockey gods to say that every player that I have criticized in the past is all of a sudden going to become better than I thought they would be. It's almost like young players are young and development exists for a reason. It also seems like maybe I'm just not as smart as I think I am, which isn't really too smart, but regardless. Let's talk today about one of the guys that was drafted in 2018, and a guy that if you remember back then, when I was making all the videos talking about Vancouver, because back in that time frame, I was only really making Vancouver-related videos, I did not want the Vancouver Canucks to draft this guy at the seventh overall spot where they had in the 2018 draft. Today, we're talking about Noah Dobson, or, as a lot of Islanders fans like to call him, Norris Dobson. I've seen that actually pop up quite a bit on social media, on the Instagram comments, on Twitter, and the Reddit comments. Norris Dobson. Very good nickname. So, let's go over who exactly Dobson is, what happened to him in the previous few months that has put him in the spotlight to where we are talking about him on the channel, and just where my concerns came with back in that 2018 draft. So... Dobson, 6'4", 183, a right-handed defenseman, 21 years old, out of Summerside, PEI, in Canada. I know somebody else is from there, I believe. What is it, Doug McLean is from there? Something like that. He did the Real Kipper at Noon show, and they would always talk about Summerside, PEI. But Noah Dobson was a QMJHL defenseman back in 2018, who was extraordinarily good for the Acadie Bateur Citon. He had himself 69 points in 67 games played as a draft-eligible defenseman wearing an A on his sweater. He went out there and won himself a Memorial Cup with the team. They were really, really good, and... There's a reason why he was projected to going as high as he was. He was projected 8th by ISS, 6th by TSN and Bob McKenzie, the 5th best North American skater by NHL Central Scouting. The lowest ranking he had that's publicly available was 10th overall by Future Considerations. However, back in this time frame, the Vancouver Canucks were kind of in dire need of defense. On the left side, they had themselves Olio Levy, they had themselves Guillaume Brisebois, and on the right side, they only really had Chris Tanev as a potential long-term option. Everybody else was kind of not good enough to crack the long-term decor or just too old. So, Noah Dobson was seen as the de facto 7th overall pick for many scouting outlets doing mock drafts, and for me personally, I made a video talking about why I didn't want to draft this guy. I was like, yeah, I personally would want one of Hughes, Kachuk, Zadina, Wallstrom, or whoever instead because I do feel like their ceilings are a lot higher. I said in the video that Noah Dobson was a guy that just did everything right. He never really stood out in a way because he was just so consistent at doing the right thing defensively, offensively. You wouldn't see him wow your pants off like a Quinn Hughes would with a fancy play with a deke and a pass out in front, but you would see Noah Dobson just play a super solid sound game and at the end of the night he'd walk away with a point or two. That's the kind of game that Noah Dobson had in the QMJHL, and the fact that he was only 180 pounds at the 6'1 or 6'3 frame or whatever it was that he had back then, it kind of sparked a lot of concern as to his physicality, because he would be able to get shoved off the puck quite easily, and he wasn't really overtly physical as a big frame defenseman. So, there were a few concerns, however, he was a super smart, super capable D-man, which is why he was projected to going so high in the first place. Alas, the Vancouver Canucks selected Quinn Hughes, and that was the best pick in my opinion, definitely the best player available, and I think today he probably should have gone a lot higher in that draft. But regardless, Noah Dobson did not actually go as high as these rankings thought he would go. The lowest ranking here was 10th overall, but he actually went 12th. You can thank Vitaly Kravtsov, Jesperi Kotkaniemi, and Barrett Hayden for that fact, but Noah Dobson going 12th overall to the New York Islanders was a really interesting pick. He spent the next season in the QMJHL once again, playing for Ruin Aranda as well as Akedi Baturs. He was an absolute monster in his second team right there. 29 points in 20 games played in the playoffs, and he was a back-to-back -back QMJHL champion as well as Memorial Cup champion. Not to mention the fact that he got the QMJHL Playoffs MVP award, the Guy Lafleur Trophy, and the rest was history. However, in the NHL, Noah Dobson played two full seasons already. His last year with the New York Islanders saw him get 14 points in 46 games played, 7 points in 19 games in the postseason as well. 
For all intents and purposes, he was just somewhat of a tweener. He would be in the bottom of the lineup, he wouldn't really get significant minutes, and he'd play some power play time here and there. Barry Trotz doesn't really like to rush young guys into his lineup ever, so it was really okay to see this kind of profile for Noah Dobson in 2019-20 and 2020-2021. This season, we also had ourselves a little bit of that trend continue, as Noah Dobson, to start off the year, was sometimes a healthy scratch. He would play significant minutes sometimes when he was in the lineup. He would get 20-minute games, 19-minute games, but then he would get a 14-minute game thrown in there, or a 17-minute game, or three straight 17-minute games. It wasn't really consistent with Noah Dobson. However, as the season has gone on, you could really see that a lot of the traits that Noah Dobson's game had have really been expanded upon for this year. Take a look at just the pure hard point production. 10 points, 24 games played over here, 3 goals, 7 assists, and if you take a look at his previous few games, I mean, Dobson in his last 8 games has 6 total points, meaning that the majority of his production has actually come in the past little bit here. And it's not even just the point production that is being expanded upon as well. Noah Dobson has gone out there and started shooting the puck a heck of a lot more. He's maxing out with five-shot games, four-shot games here and there, where last season, he was barely over a shot a game in total. He's not afraid to start unleashing that puck towards the goal and getting it in front. It's leading to assists. It's leading to big goal moments. The game against Chicago was probably the most notable one where that last second goal sent the game to overtime. But a lot of what Noah Dobson does in the offensive zone is just better than it was before. He is tied for fourth on the team in total points, and he is in a tie for third on the team in assists with his seven assist mark. He's also producing on the power play, which is a very big desire for the New York Islanders because their power play has not really been great the past few seasons. And it's not even just that, it's the defensive side as well. Earlier on in his career, there were issues about his defensive stability, you know, being light on his feet, being shoved off the puck. Well, Noah Dobson has gone out there and started hitting guys a lot more too. He's still 180-something pounds, but he's really using his frame in a more effective way. Body checks, shot blocks, he's really bringing out a gritty side to his game. And it's that commitment, that desire to block a shot or get in somebody's way and shove him off the puck, or at least try to do that, that is allowing Barry Trotz to say, okay, well, go out there and start playing a little bit more. Noah Dobson is getting consistently 23, 22-minute games now. He had 26 minutes against Chicago, 24 minutes the night before that. So he's gone out there and started utilizing every asset of his game that was present in the QMJHL. Now, I get it. He's not producing at a point-per-game rate, but he kind of, if you take a look at just the recent sample of play, has gone out there and had a significant increase in production. So much to the point that Islanders fans everywhere are just saying, yeah, you know, small victories. There are a whole bunch of players on this team that are underperforming right now. The team as a whole, it's kind of just down the dumps. We are not doing well in New York, Long Island over here. So any small victories, any guys that are going out there playing more than we expected, playing better than we expected, these are the guys to latch on to, and these are the stories that can really carry a fan base through seasons of desperation and despair. And you just gotta think, man, from last year to this year, there has been such a significant improvement that it's almost like a pure, straight-up, just exponential function on a graph. As time goes on, the guy gets better at a rate that increases over time, too. Now, going back to the intro of this video, does that mean that I would have taken Noah Dobson over Quinn Hughes at 7th overall for my Vancouver Canucks? No, I probably would have taken Hughes a lot higher than 7th overall just in the first place, but still. The concerns that I had with Noah Dobson and him not really projecting to having a top-of-the-line projection to his game in the NHL... I mean, the way he's going right now, he's only 21 years old, right? I mean, he can get better. He's definitely got it within him. It's just, I was a lot more believing of the guys in the draft that I would have just preferred to choose them over him. But still, definitely credit where credit is due. Noah Dobson has gone out there and improved significantly. Islanders fans are over the moon for this guy. Let me know in the comments what do you think about Noah Dobson and his entire projection over here. Do you think he was a steal at 12th overall where the Islanders snagged him up? He was actually the second in a back-to-back -back little sweep there. It was Wallstrom and then Dobson, 11th and 12th overall. Talk to me in the comments all your thoughts about this player and the like. I hope you enjoyed this video. Ash Rolls is 9 and bye.